I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hey everybody, it's Oops the Podcast. Francis Ellis here, recording from rural Pennsylvania, New Hope, right near where George Washington crossed the Delaware to fight the Hessians. And I'm joined by <laughs> Julio Gallarotti. What's up, dude? How you doing? Live from Amagansett, New York. Yes. Looking regal as hell. Trying, man. I am all lubed up in Hinoki wood moisturizer. I just smell like a fucking Japanese garden. Very few people are doing better than you. I'm doing okay. I'm doing Give okay. me the update. What's the latest? How are things developing on your end? So let me ask you this. This is a, a niche question, but I started watching Game of Thrones, as I mentioned last time. Great. And for the friends that I'm with have already seen it, but they are re-watching it. And I'm ahead of them. And I started talking about the episode and my friend goes, dude, dude, don't spoil it. I'm like, you've already seen it. <laughs> But he's like, I don't remember. I was like, is this, is that a fair state? Does he have a fair claim there? Oh, it's a great question. That is a <laughs> great question. Um, Uncharted territory. No, I, I think that's absurd. I think it's Thank absurd you. that he would expect you to not disclose. <laughs> and, and, and conversely, you can't expect anybody not to spoil it for you because you are so late on this. No, I know. And people and, have already been sort of spoiling it. Yeah, yeah. But, but you're not going to make that claim. You're not going to be like, don't tell me I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just started season four, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, wow, you are flying. I'm flying, dude. I Crazy. guess that's what happens when, yeah, I mean – in times like these, I, yeah. I'll say I am, I'm kind of saddened by how little television I've watched. That's great though. What have you been doing? Dude, for one, you know, my job is continuing. Thank God. All right. So my weekdays are full until 4 or 5 PM. Um, and then after that, my girlfriend and me, I think that's the biggest thing. If I were alone right now, I'd be tearing through Netflix and Hulu. Right. But the two of us, you know, cooking is a huge part of our day. Uh, our after work glass of wine. We started playing cribbage. What's that? It's a, it's a card. It's the, considered the oldest card game. I mean, okay. it's old. Like when you play it, you feel old. Yeah, your ancestors played it as they came, voyaged across the sea. They sure did. They sure <laughs> did when they, between bouts of vomiting on the old Mayflower. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, very old card game. I don't know if it's fun yet. I, I haven't decided if it's going to be fun for us, but we were getting a little tired of Scrabble. Scrabble um, and making love. Yeah, we're, not much love. Not much love making more uh more of yeah <laughs> survival <laughs> the old prone bone <laughs> but um it's great dude yeah so we and then after that you know it's like it'll be 9 nine thirty by the time we finish the dishes and right. we watch one episode of tv and then we're tired and we go to bed We've been going to bed at like 10 45, 11. And I think that's that. I think that's an important part of maintaining sanity, you know? Agreed. I need to start doing that. I've been going to bed late and I need to start waking up early. What time are you going to bed? I've been going to bed around three. <laughs> Dude, this is, you're living like college kids home for the summer. Dude, I'm like Arthur. You ever see that movie, Arthur? Wait. Yeah, the, with Russell Brand. No, no. Well, I, there might have been a remake. There's the one with uh, Dudley Moore. So that's probably the original. Same I story, think. I imagine. Yeah, Russell Brand was the, was the remake. I don't think it was very good. But anyway, I'm waking up at like 11 a.m., which is terrible. And my day's gone and like... Look, 
I need to get on the early schedule. There's part of me that thinks that that would that I mean I would like that. That would be nice. I would like a few days of uh, really vegging and acting like a piece of shit. Because when I when I get hung over, like I had two, I had a lot of wine on Saturday night, and I woke up on Sunday and I was like, God, my life is falling apart. Just one night of like five glasses of wine. And, and did, I, what, is that the only night you've done that? Yeah. Yeah, I drank two drinks last night. So five, did you wake up feeling despair? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to avoid it, dude. It's, it's. I agree. Oh, you broke the seal, though. You've I had, broke the seal. Wow. I had two, and I smoked a bunch of weed, too, which I don't normally do. And I woke Good up feeling you. not great. But uh, to, to your point, it's true. I feel like equilibrium is really important right now. Yes, yes. Structure and finding a routine, except... Our routine has sort of evolved along the lines of totally married couple that refuses to do anything interesting. <laughs> and, Who, and, who's deserted and, their friends. I don't know if this is the right model. I think, there, I think you've got to add a little bit of risk and flair, which is why I'm still trying to find a way to buy a gun. <laughs> to buy, you, you should maybe do it. I want to buy a gun. We're, we're, we got to head to Maine, by the way. So You are? Yeah. So her parents rented the house on Airbnb. Do you hear that rental markets are, are booming? How? So apparently everybody in New York City is renting places in the Hamptons and wherever else to oh, get right. out of town. So the Hamptons rentals are, are flying in the way that they do in July. Oh, yeah. They're crushing. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And so everyone's everyone's renting houses her parents often rent this house on airbnb and they someone has now rented the place for two weeks starting tomorrow so we gotta leave wow. and we're gonna drive to maine are you gonna get that guy albert to drive you who's albert what was that guy the teenager who drove you oh um wayne <laughs> Wayne, <laughs> I don't think, no. Fortunately, we, we have a car. We are going to take her mom's car and drive it. But it's, you know, it's seven hours up to Maine. It's not a, not a great drive. That's a hell of a drive. Yeah. Have you ever and, done that drive specifically? Uh, I've driven from New York to Maine a number of times. But, Never knew you know, this, is, this adds another hour and a half probably. Mm. It'll be fun. It could be. I don't know, dude. We're not going to be able to stop on the way. Um, I just wonder if there are any gun stores uh, on the drive. That's that's my question. And and if not in Maine, if I can if I can purchase a firearm at L. Bean, they have a really good selection there. <laughs> why why the gun desire? I just think I just think it'd be good to have one, you know, in the middle of the night. Because look, here's the thing, Julio. I don't know if, you got, if you've watched movies before, but in movies, right, there's no bigger bitch than the guy who wakes up in the middle of the night because he hears creeping and creaking in his house and he grabs a fucking hairdryer and stands around the corner and goes, who's there? Who's there? Okay. You know, yeah. you know who's not a bitch? The guy who cocks his gun and then sneaks up behind the guy who's in his kitchen going through the silverware and puts the gun to the back of his head and says, get out of here. You know, that guy. Or, or blows his brains out and then has, uh, you know, the maid clean the brain matter and the shards of skull off the family portrait the next day. That <laughs> or, guy. Or that seven, it's her seven year old son. By yeah, sure, sure. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the point is, the point is you're, you're allowed to kill somebody in that situation. Right. You are. You're allowed to kill somebody and everyone congratulates you. It's I feel like, like you're prepared to take a life. Dude, I've been prepared to take a life. <laughs> A lot longer than than this whole thing started. Oh my god! Are you kidding? I used to kill small animals just to see how it felt. 
<laughs> Nothing crazy, you know. I would tell myself I was putting them out of their misery. Like if I saw a, a pigeon with a broken wing, I would uh, I'd bring it home and connect it to some jumper cables and you know roast a pigeon <laughs> you're like the guy from the cats from the cats documentary yeah yeah but that, that, animals. that pigeon wasn't going to survive long so i kind of just you know got some answers out of it <laughs> dude i can hear chris laughing and it sounds muffled it sounds like we have him captive sure sure i, I, can, I, I can see chris in i could probably do chris in for the right price yeah Dude, you sound like Dexter at the beginning of the uh, series. Yeah, you start small and then you work your way up. That's the big thing. Um, I'm not <laughs> ready for, like, homeless vagrants yet, but <laughs> that's not going to take much, you know? I got I to gotta train somehow. So, hey, we have a, a great guest that we're going to get on today. Let's see if she's ready. Um. We're going to bring our old friend Ashley Hesseltine back in just to check in and see how she's doing. I think she's in Delaware, Delaware, uh, Delaware's a state. I was going to say Delaware, Nebraska, but that's not right. Oh, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, we are graced by an angel. It is Ashley Hesseltine. You know yeah. her from Girls Gotta Eat. You know her from our podcast. Welcome back, Ashley. Thanks for joining us. I'm so glad to be here. Where are Ish. you? <laughs> I'm in Delaware. Mm. Where, where I mean I know where you are Francis but Julia what cabin are you in <laughs> I'm in I'm way out on Long Island okay Look I didn't know this. they had log cabins out there <laughs> oh <my> yeah <laughs> pretty spooky right serious cabin situation I love talking to people on FaceTime and on Zoom that are like at their parents and there's just like so much weird shit like on the walls yeah. and like in the room you know yeah. I'm not at my parents <laughs> house but agreed Okay. Julia, you look like you spent the day hunting partridge. <laughs> and now you're reposing with the other members of this very <laughs> old bachelor party. And a successful hunt it was. Yeah, it's like a bachelor party for guys on their third marriage. That's what you're that's what you've just completed that day. <laughs> that's that when you go great. hunt. Wait, but yeah. where so but who are you with, Julio? I'm with my friends who I live with in the city. They have a oh. house on Long Island and like my parents are a little uh, like I was I'm worried about like giving it to my parents. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I, I did. Oh. I gave it to mine. You did? <laughs> no. Oh, <kidding>. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was worried, but I'm we're fine. You're fine. That's good. Yeah. Um, how's right. Delaware? How's your dog? He's great. He was just like barking, making being bad every day. At the end of the day, I give him a rating on how bad he's been. So, and like my mom and I talked to him in the same like doggy voice, like, you know, we have like the same thing. And then with the end of the day, before we go to bed, we like rate him like one to 10, 10 being like the best and to see how like bad, how like good, bad dog he's been. Mm. Dogs are winning this. I mean, they're getting yeah. all the attention. <laughs> cats are pissed. <laughs> they're like, why are you yeah. here? <laughs> Fucking cats. <laughs> Guys, really quick. Uh, there's a, this is the third package delivery that's arrived here today. What are, what's in them? I don't know. If you can't see this. Well, maybe you can. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You see this guy? I do. Yeah. Okay. These people are arriving in cars. It's like, it's not UPS. It's not a FedEx truck. It's just. Oh, that happens some, here. Some dude, you know. Yeah, they just come in like a van and yeah. they're like, what's up? I'm, I got your Amazon. We're like, what? <laughs> so sketchy. But Francis, you're with, you're at your girlfriend's parents. Yeah, but they're not here. For forever or for like? Well, they have a place, they have a, an apartment in Miami and her stepdad is a, a pilot for American Airlines. And let me tell you something. Um, he's busy. It, okay. he's, he's still flying. He's still flying every every day. Like the all these routes, his planes are a third full, so they have to have everyone sit in the front together uh, for weight dispersion issues. Wow. And you'd think in an empty plane, everyone would, would social distance and spread out, but that's not what they can't even do. That that's so, a crazy fact. Yeah. So that people are flying like. Like, I just don't, I'm, I'm confused on travel at this point. Well, some people have to go 
take care of like for sure like essential grandparents travel. and stuff but yeah. can you take like a vacation right now on an airplane yeah air I think if you wanted to be air a piece travel of shit, is, planes are still flying and they have these things like routes where airplanes are given a certain number of like routes or something and if you don't use your route you lose the right to use it oh so a lot of these planes apparently are flying with very very few passengers so that they don't even i mean it's pretty Maybe sad those rules should have been changed with the pandemic you would think <laughs> you think. would think like i don't think we have, no, nobody's abiding by like any rules in anything right. are you guys going to keep paying rent for your apartments uh, i don't know i i okay i am going to reassess in a month what like what's the option what option do we have i um <laughs> my rent's really expensive like it's like to not pay it or to not live there and pay it for five or six months is like an exorbitant amount of money like i'm not trying to brag i moved recently and, and i like upgraded and now i have this really expensive apartment that i'm not living in and i want to live there if i'm going to live in new york but if i'm really going to be here for for six months or longer then i don't know i would just there's no way to know i guess I have no idea. This right. has been on my mind a lot. It's a big chunk of money to spend to not live in your apartment. What about you guys? Yeah, I think I'm going to be like a yeah. assess as it goes that, along. That, I mean, I'm in a similar position. I I paid my rent for on the 15th and next month, I don't know. I, I I don't know what to say. I mean, I know it's not as if they would rent my apartment, you know, like Who's yeah, going I, on? Who's apartment hunting in New York City right, right now? Right. No, yeah. So and you know, I had this. I had this. Maybe you don't know, but I had a crazy situation happen when I moved in because I live above a Trader Joe's where the noise was so out of control. So basically, they've told me they told me before all this happened that I could just break my lease without any penalty, um, which I think all those penalties would be out the door during this anyway. I don't think it would matter, but it's like I kind of have an out. It just it would like I mean whatever people have way worse stuff going on. People are dying. They're losing their jobs. They're losing their life savings. I get it. But like, it would like be so heartbreaking to just like move out of my New York city apartment and move back home with my parents. I mean, I, I hope it doesn't come to that for me or anybody else. It sucks. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. It would be really shitty. Um, are you guys say looking this, though, for- Ashley, you, you look Sorry, great. Go ahead. Um, thank you so much. I did wash my hair for you guys. And there's like a pretty filter on zoom. You guys know about it or oh, fuck. What? What? <laughs> Say it's what? In, yeah, there's there's a setting that says touch up my appearance. You guys obviously don't have it marked. No, Fuck. no, this is oh natural. <laughs> you guys hilarious. don't need it. With those jaw lines, you guys are fine. Yeah, yeah Julio went with 19th century fucking Dracula mansion and I'm <laughs> I actually dressed up a little bit today. I'm wearing a polo shirt and a sweater because I got so sick of myself. Are you wearing jeans? Je- if you're wearing really jeans wearing- in quarantine, we have a problem. <laughs> I'm not wearing jeans, but I am wearing Lululemon ABC pants, yes, which are, are uh, a good go-between. They're not like full-on <laughs> sweats. You could wear them to a startup if you worked there. Mm-hmm. Um, ride a bike in them. They're for at. like cycling. Like, aren't yeah. they good if you're going to like ride your bike? I just saw a meme today that was like people that are – like lounging in your home during quarantine in jeans, what are you trying to prove? Like you're a psychopath if you yeah. aren't wearing a stretchy waistband six out of seven days of the week. Well, 100%. but Ashley, I think that, and that's a good question. And that's what I have, have for you guys, which is if I allow myself <laughs> to exist only in sweatpants and maternity clothing, um, will I become disgusting i mean no you have to try the jeans on once a week okay to see where you're at yeah it's that's the that's what you're supposed to do so you wear your pajama pants your leggings your lulu every day and then on like wednesday you just you do like the jean check right i i have been I, i at night once all my work is done i change back into my i'm flying today and i'm on my period outfit <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but after that, I mean, during the day, I have to make a concerted effort to put myself together. I'm still shaving and brushing my teeth and flossing. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm, I'm living with my girlfriend here, but uh, yeah. I find that I've tightened up during this period for the sake of my own sanity. I look amazing. I'm not trying to brag. I just did my yoga sculpt class. Like I set up, I am feeling my parents eat so healthy that like this has been full blown like fat camp for me. Glow I up. saw you post yeah. it on the gram. You posted you like did a, have a you, you posted pick. a little bit of a thirsty, a little thirst. I, there are no rules anymore, you guys. Mm. I'm posting pandemic thirst traps left and right. Yeah, I'm going to be socially conscious with them. <laughs> like if you spread the right message, you can yeah. post whatever you want. I <laughs> do, okay. When does this come out? Because I'm going to start it before this tomorrow, probably. Okay. All right. I really do. You know, people are doing these push up challenges. Yeah. yeah. Like. If you if your listeners don't know, you probably have seen it. And there's like dog challenges. It's basically like someone does it on their Instagram story. They tag five people to do the challenge. I've seen ten push ups, and then you have to do ten push ups. I've seen like see a dog, send a dog, like all these challenges. I'm gonna do quarantine thirst trap challenge, Ooh, and I, like I love that. Tag like five girls, like Hannah, Mary Beth Barone, Raina, you two. That's those are my five. Hell yeah. Damn. Okay. I love that. That's a great challenge. I will definitely do it. I want to see you guys like just, I want to see a guy try to be sexy. Like I think it's going to take off. That's really funny. I posted a thinly veiled thirst trap, but my, it was with all that, uh, like, you know, woods gear. Um, but my, I wasn't allowed to flex for it. My girlfriend said, (laughs) But dude, you were you looked like you were flexing. That's good. I wasn't That's flexing. Good. I know. Wait, and it, it frustrated it me because everyone thought I was flexing and I wanted to reply, I'm Hard not post. even flexing. But uh, I couldn't I couldn't flex. I wasn't allowed to wow, flex. Wow, Francis, that been geez. Too thirsty. The one with the, the, the um chainsaw? Yeah, the chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Is that your real body? <laughs> yeah. Shred bro city. People, you really are like kind of undercover with your body. People don't really see it coming. Yeah, right. You know who else is like that? Governor Good, Andrew mean. Cuomo. Oh, Daddy Cuomo? I could Holy go on shit. about Daddy Cuomo for this whole episode. He is our dad now. He's our president. He is our leader. I watch him every day. He is – He. I'm. are you guys a fan? Were you fans before? I didn't care I mean, before, and now he's the man. I didn't I mean, know a ton about him, you know? Um, he's our dad now. Like, he's just – Yeah. He is talking to his little brother on CNN. So funny. Yes, Nobody. but he is he's low key hot. Of course. Do you know is. how hot his brother is? Have you seen pictures of Chris Cuomo? That dude is an ejaculation in a shirt. Okay. <laughs> and I'll go even one step further. Andrew Cuomo did his press conference today in a gray state of New York you know, more like memorabilia shirt as if he, he, he always wears suits. And that today, polo was, shirt? Like, yeah, it was as if he had spilled Danish filling on his suit and told some young aide, quick, find me a replacement. And all the kid could find was a shirt that was handed out during Hurricane <laughs> Sandy. And it's one of those <laughs> shitty polos that is like, looks like it's made from burlap sack, the sort of yeah. thing that children would race in at a county fair. And uh, it's polo shirts like that are the great equalizer because the sleeves come all the way down to the elbow. Unlike yeah. an Abercrombie and Fitch polo where the sleeve ends at the shoulder. Um, and yeah, it's a loose fitting daddy polo. He still yeah. filled it out. And I think he's got some guns on him. Yeah. I, I know Chris Cuomo. I know who he is. I've definitely masturbated to him before, he's, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah he's, he's like, he's, there's a lot of those like CNN, like yeah, Jake Tapper type, you know, like that are spank bang material for sure. Well, they're all, <laughs> they're all living, they're drinking the Anderson Cooper Kool Aid, you know, and I think Cooper keeps them all on. Uh, in, and Sa- Sanjay, I've had drinks with him. He is it. so attractive. Huh. I mean, having a big tell, but in, in person, geez. Hmm. That's interesting. That That's a sleeper. That one surprises me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Cuomo looks great. You know, I, uh, I, I ordered a kettlebell on Amazon, 65 okay. pounds. That's going to sure. suck for them to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what a nightmare. You're going to be like, what's in this fucking thing? <laughs> Ashley, are you dating anyone right now? Um, no. How is that? 
Okay. My, I, I, I was hoping you girlfriend. guys were going to ask me about dating actually. Cause yeah. like we released our first like pandemic podcast episode today about mm-hmm. like dating during this time and stuff. Right. Um, I was kind of dating somebody before this, like pretty casually. Um, but I mean, I was into it, but we dated and then I went on this really long trip and then I felt like it kind of started to fizzle out, which I mean, you know, which is understandable. You know, we dated for like a few weeks and I left for like a month basically. So then we, I, we got back. I was back for like one week before we had to basically go into quarantine and in New York. And during this time, like I saw this guy, but I just felt like things were a little weird. Uh, and I'm just, the, I'm very like open where like, if you're not into this, like, just tell me now. Cause I want to, you know, I don't, we don't want to waste each other's time, whatever. So we kind of had that conversation. I feel like it was a little weird. And then I was like, whatever, if it's, I mean, the world's about to fall apart anyway. I'm, you know, it is what it is. And then I guess he like took some time and like thought about it and kind of came back around. He was still trying to talk to me every day and then was like, I want to like take you out on a date. My impression of that was like, I've decided that like, I do want to try to do this, you know, and like, not like I was never wanting to be like girlfriend, boyfriend, but like, uh, we should continue to date. But by that point, we were literally already in quarantine. And I was like, I will never forget the time a guy waited until there was like a ban on social activities to ask me on a date. Like, I can't believe this. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, like, I was just like, I can't. And he was just like, well, you know, I know, bad timing, right? I'm like, what? no, I'm over this. Like, I mean, I still like the guy. I was like, this is a bummer. But then I was like, yeah, sure. I'll go on a date with you in the fall you know like who knows what's gonna happen and then i left and went to delaware so uh but then he actually posted something on instagram where like his shirt was off and he looked really hot and i was like furious you know you just mm-hmm. you like you i hate that mm-hmm. like any guy i've ever dated after we dated they got like worse looking and it's like really been my track record so to have it kind of flipped on its head was upsetting to me but then I did DM him. I was like, can I get the extended cut for my spank bank? You know, like I really just, I don't have no, I have no pride anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> I'm kind of open to whatever. I, there's a guy in Hinge that's trying to like cyber date me. I don't know. He's like, can I get your number? I'm like, for what? <laughs> like, I, it's going to get crazy, I think. So when you say the extended cut, do you mean him being naked, like jerking off? I, you know what? I, I never thought of that. I he. I mean, now I'm wondering. You now I'm time? wondering what he thought. Hmm. Do you think he thought I meant like semi naked? Well, what did you? What did the fuck did you mean? I just yeah, meant like. I going, just meant yeah. like this is like hot. I'd like to see more. That's where my mind was. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. Not but, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. but now. <laughs> should good. I go back and clarify days later? Hey, just to clarify. I did actually want to video you jerking off and you didn't yeah. send it. So and I provide some director's commentary as well, please. <laughs> no. Dude, yeah. that is hilarious. Director's can commentary. Can you imagine him being what like, can you imagine him was... being like, you know, we, we had to make a lot of changes uh, in this moment uh, because unfortunately Crafty <laughs> ran out of heat lamps. So, uh, you know, I got hungry and uh, we were shooting long beyond what we had opted for and the overtime pay started getting, you know, great. Uh, he's right. like, you'll notice the redness at the top of the shaft. We had run low on lube at this point. <laughs> Now, now, what happened next? You're not going to believe this. Uh, my my co-star actually said we should do it this way, and I said to myself, "No, I'm going to take the reins here." Okay, and I went with my instinct, and that's that's off script. All right. Is this the first time you guys are discussing a director's commentary on a jerk off video? This is yeah. incredible. Oh yeah. Oh, You're yeah. Pri- <laughs> yeah, we struggle upon these sorts of things all the time. Yeah. That's a now, good Ashley. I, yeah. Here's my question. Uh, do you think that people will move much more quickly into sharing nudes territory and, <laughs> you know, than they did before? Get, like, is there going to be an acceleration to hardcore, you know, mutual masturbation over FaceTime and stuff like that? I think so. I think it's all, I mean, it's everything that's virtual is going to be escalated. So mm-hmm. I think that, 
I truly do think that we're going to get to a point. I mean, I think we already are actually. I think we've seen some girls in our Facebook group and send us messages and stuff that ha- are like really meeting guys on like Bumble and Hinge and going on like Zoom dates and like, you know, pouring a glass of wine and like FaceTiming, Skyping, going on first dates with people from the internet. It like via the, you know, uh, mm-hmm. virtually. A hundred percent people are going to step up their nude Skype sex, FaceTime sex game. It's just, I don't know that people are, this is still for us. What I mean, we're in like a little over a week, the rest of the country. Some of them are ahead of us. So some states and cities are ahead of us. Some are behind. Some still really aren't fully quarantined, I feel like, or they're not doing what they're told. But I think in a couple of weeks, it's going to, people are really going to start to get crazy mm. and horny. Yeah. Horned up. Yeah. They're going to get horned up for sure. So, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'm already like posting more thirst traps on Instagram alone, you know, and like seeing the DMS that slide in, like I've already kind of stepped up my game. So I can't even imagine what's going on behind closed doors for a lot of people, you know? Yeah. 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 Good for you. I try to imagine. Um, I love it. I'm all for it. Thanks. Th- there's something, there's something pretty shameful for me about having to find a, a part of the house far enough away from my girlfriend that she won't hear me masturbating you know like i was wondering about from sink it's tough how that's working it's not great because you know look sure in an ideal world we'd be we'd be having sex all the time but i do i like i like to fly a little solo mission every once in a while and yeah I used to be afforded that opportunity every single day and now it's harder to find me time. Um, so I don't know. I don't Maybe know. Maybe you we'll go, out and, like, go out in the woods. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. Part two so of your cold. video, dude, jerking it in, in chainsaw clothing. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with <laughs> Husqvarna gloves on. Starting OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, so Julia, what's your, you're not with your girlfriend. I'm right? not. She, I, okay. I'm not. She's in California um, with her family, and it is a it's a bummer for sure. Um, yeah. But you know, I wonder if we were together the entire time, if that would be like stressful. Also, you know what I mean. I'm not. Mm. So it sucks to be apart, but like it makes you definitely miss her a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I was thinking about this. Like, I feel like during this time, I've been like, all right, well, I can work on some stuff that I was meaning to that I was never going to get to. But now I feel like. I'm procrastinating more than I've ever procrastinated and I have nothing else to get in the way. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are dealing with that. I think a lot of people are having like productivity guilt. Right. It's more glaring now that you're not doing the things that you had always not done. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. But I mean, I don't know. Like even then, like I was, I was pretty good at eventually getting around to things. And I feel like now I'm really like, having trouble even getting in the shower you know what i mean i'm like oh Dude, i have to shower like, this is what we were talking about earlier you have to do kind of a version of what i did which is like you get up at try to find a way to get up at the same time each day put on some decent i mean look at you you're in a fucking bathrobe three o'clock. you know <laughs> oh, yeah, it is three your o'clock. shit together otherwise you're gonna lose your marbles i i've felt it happening already guys listen to this the routine so i was telling julio I had to drive back into New York City on on Friday uh, because I had to. It looked like they were kind of really starting to shut the city down. And when we left, I had packed like a gym bag with you know a few T-shirts, deodorant, whatever. So I went back to get enough shit to last me for a while. So I picked up some, you know, like my keyboard and a couple other things. My girlfriend gave me. Four items that she needed, just four. I packed her bag first, left it right by the door so that I wouldn't miss it. Uh-huh. Went and got my keyboard, my guitar, a bunch of sports equipment that I'm never going to use, all kinds of bullshit. Made multiple trips out to the car, closed up the apartment, was like, I've got it all, and then drove all the way back to Pennsylvania, an hour and a half each way. I got into the door here and she was like, where's my stuff? I left it. So the next day, I had to drive back to New York City and get just her bag. And it's an hour and a half each way. And not only that, but you're driving into 
the epicenter now. The, the eye of the storm. The, yeah, it's truly the, the worst place to go. And it was crazy. Even the difference between Friday and then Saturday. On Friday, yeah. people were still kind of out and about. On Saturday, it looked like that scene from uh, Independence Day when Will Smith walks out to get the newspaper in the morning and all the neighbors are packing up vans and leaving. And he's like, huh, what's this about? Yeah. What's this about? And then he looks up and sees the spaceship. It, everybody was moving out of New York City. Yeah. I mean, it, it happened so quick. Like, I mean, Francis, you know, you were way more like, this is bad than I was. <clears throat> I'm not like a denier. I'm just I'm like, no one knows it's going to happen. We'll just have to take it one day, one hour at a time. But you were like, we're going, we're leaving like indefinitely or, you know, for the foreseeable future. And I was like, wait, what? And then I saw yeah. another a guy, a friend of mine and his girlfriend did the same thing. And they were like, we're not going to be, you know, teaching at Flywheel. And I'm like, wait, is this really happening? <laughs> And I was like, everybody's leaving. They're all going to their parents. This is so wild. And then, and then for me, it was the moment they set, they shut down the bars and restaurants where I was like, oh, well, we're not going to have anything to do, you know, and yeah. we're not supposed to. So this is where I want to be, you know, but it was just so, it, the way that it happened was, it was just so quick. It was like an overnight shift. It was yeah. one minute people were out. We had our shows and, and everything. And then like literally the next day, it was like, if you don't stay home, you're fucking dick. You know, it was really yeah. crazy. Yeah. Literally. It's exactly, yeah. it was crazy. So when did you we're, all adjusting, oh, we're all adjusting to this new normal, right? And, uh, you know, I think we'll find a way. Um, but Ashley, do you have any tips or suggestions for people about how they can kind of have fun. Like what have you been doing to have fun? Um, I mean, I think we've had like a lot of work to do, you know, like I, I, I think that I'm so, I was so well prepared for this cause I've worked from home for 10 years. You know, I work for myself, like we aren't touring, but like we've had a lot of stuff to do. So I, I, it's like hard for me to relate to somebody that literally has no work to do. You know, like a lot of my days still, like even last week, I mean, I kind of didn't work a lot of the weekend, but so that's, what's filling a lot of my time still. We're like getting all this video content together. We're trying to do all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think that everybody's different. I personally have to work out. So I think there's the options are endless. Like I went and set up like my space with the yoga mat and the weights and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I think it's kind of fun to be able to try all these new things every day, every other day. Like everybody's doing the streaming stuff. Like any mm -hmm. workout you could possibly want is online for free for the most part. Um, and I think like, I like, I mean, I, I think the people that have money and are financially secure should be giving back. I think it just makes you feel better. Like you're doing something. I've tried every day to like do something that for somebody else that in need, like whether it's helping these like medical professionals or sending food to the hospitals. And I've been sending like Starbucks gift cards to like these nurses and like all the stuff. So I think if you have the ability that it's just like makes you feel a little bit better. Um, some people need that routine, like wake up at a certain time, shower, stuff like that. For me, the thing that keeps me sane is like the exercise part of it. Agreed so, for me too. Yeah. But nice. I mean, reading, I think this is a great time for anything you ever wanted to do. Meditation, you, you know, yeah. working Delete out, your duplicates. reading books. Huh? Delete your duplicates from your phone. Yeah. Stuff like, like little projects like that. And then also just like not beating yourself up. Like we're going to be doing this for a while. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think, you know, don't feel like I have to do all these things in like the week one, you know, right. like this Look. is kind of where we're at for the foreseeable future. Right. I, I would... I would say something as simple as trying to get people to lower their phone screen time. And it's something that I've harped on many times before, but I think for right now, the biggest part of my phone screen time is kind of just refreshing the news and yeah. it sucks. It's like, I hate reading there's never there hasn't been a good headline in two weeks yeah right. you know can you really say that like oh china has no new confirmed cases like is that you know right next to that is new york city cases explode so yeah, right. finding a way what i've been doing is i've just been leaving my phone in a different part of the house for like three hour periods of time 
And that has allowed me to disconnect a little bit from the morbid headlines that are constantly in my face. Well, and I guess setting like boundaries, because when I, in the morning, I usually CNN's on with my parents. And I mean, you can watch it for 10 minutes and you know what's going on. You don't need yeah. to sit there for an hour and let right. it kind of like seep into your brain. Like I like to stay informed. I think we, you can also take a break from the news for the day. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I think that you can keep the news on for hours and hours and hours. And I think it just starts to really like affect your mental state. Right. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, the, my thing, like yesterday there was something on the bottom line and I forget what it was like on CNN that wasn't that interesting. It said breaking news and it said something that wasn't that interesting. And I was like, oh, that's good news. Like there isn't yeah. something absolutely terrible. Mm. In the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I but like little shit like that just like is helpful. Do like, you, you know what I've been that. wondering? Also like, masturbating. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I forgot my vibrator. It was the whole thing. This company reached out and I got, I got a new one. It's on the way. Good. Thank yeah. you. You got pull. You got pull. I mean, I bought one. I was like, these is a woman founded company. I want to support them. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. but I was like, <laughs> you, they were like, we want to send you a care package. I was like, no, I'd like to buy it. I mean, like at cost, like I'd like a discount, but I want to support you guys. <laughs> you dog. <laughs> no, they were like wanting to give it for me for free. I was like, I don't want you going out of pocket during this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they just gave me like a 70% off, you know, and I bought like a couple <laughs> vibrators, some lube, like I still, and then I like promoted them in return. Mm-hmm. Cause I think if women, if this, if you haven't really explored your body, what time, like the present, oh, this is yeah. the best time yeah. Get in there. Okay, hey, sorry, I interrupted. You, no, that was, that was better than what I was going to say. But I, <laughs> I was thinking about, um, imagine being like a journalist who was embedded with the Mexican cartel, right? And you were writing this crazy six month Pulitzer Prize potential piece and you're, you're finishing it up, you're, you've beaten yourself to death, you've shot heroin to prove your allegiance and all of a sudden the New York Times is like, dude, we gotta hold that story indefinitely sorry bro nobody cares i know it's it's just we i mean i guess because we're all in it together it doesn't feel it's like we're all canceled everybody's home it feels so much better because of that yeah like it's really this isn't like a hot take but like if you really think about what this means, I've seen like different memes and tweets and even like Daddy Cuomo has said something along the lines, but just like we've never been so connected yet isolated at the same time. It's just mm-hmm. so crazy. Like the whole world, like everybody's on the same like playing field, like right. not financially or anything, but all these celebrities, all the rich people, they're at home too, you know? I mean, yeah, granted in their mansions, I don't want to hear about it. And that Imagine thing was a fucking disaster. But like, mm-hmm. you know, we're all just in it together. And um Another thing I wanted to say too was I think it's, you need to make a concerted effort to connect with your friends and family. If you're not with your family already to do these like zoom happy hours. And I mean, I have friends sending like scheduled zoom chats, happy hours, things like that. I think it's going to be really important and like to actually schedule it and have it on the books and have something to look forward to. Like I've Mm -hmm. seen people like they're getting ready. Like they're, they're getting ready. Their women are putting on makeup to go on these like fun, happy hours. You know, you have DJ nice doing these dance parties and people are joining in and people are working out together. And I think these, like, there's still all these ways to connect. And I think it's like so important to do it. Totally. Well said. Well, so I think I in I got this great email that was uh, I think it was written by Bill Gates, and it's been forwarded around to a lot of people. And I just want to read a few of these things because Ashley, your point rings very true. Uh, what is it doing? It is reminding us that we are all equal, regardless of our cultural, culture, religion, occupation, financial situation, or how famous we are. This disease treats everyone equally, uh, and perhaps we should too. If you don't believe me, just ask Tom Hanks. It is reminding us that we are all connected and that something that affects one person has an effect on another. It doesn't care about borders. Uh, Virus does not need a passport. It reminds us by oppressing us for a short time of those in this world whose life is spent in oppression. Um, It's definitely kind of like changed my perspective a lot. And uh, hopefully we won't forget some of these lessons once and if 
it all returns to so and such such and called normal or whatever. So, well, well I think it we're is have a, a totally new normal. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, so, for, for, for I was just gonna say the the virus is ageist, unfortunately. It is, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing that he maybe left out of that quote. Yeah, and it, wow. and it reminds us that we, we should be ageist as well. I mean, old people smell horrific, and they don't really bring much to the table. I don't know if you guys have ever had a phone call with a grandparent or, God forbid, a FaceTime. I mean, the <laughs> amount of confusion that you have to just well, deal it's just with. It's like you just get like oh. this. They're just like this. <laughs> My grandparents, God bless them, when we- <laughs> When we would talk on the phone, they lived in Italy, they sounded like they were trying to yell across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. I, can't, I, I feel like I'm yelling when we do these. So, like, dude, my grandma, I FaceTimed my grandmother yesterday, and she Aww. got, while we were FaceTiming, she got a phone call. It was as if somebody had handed her the fucking nuclear codes and said, figure it out. I mean, it could. <laughs> oh my god yeah that's too sending much me emojis there were fucking <laughs> random people joining our FaceTime. it was i don't know but listen we we should probably wrap there um uh, ashley thank you so much for, for joining us guys. from delaware Good luck uh thanks great to see your face you look fantastic let's thanks. keep in touch the corona glow up yeah <laughs> yeah that's corona Good to glow. See you as well we can always find ashley Hesseltine on instagram at Oh, Ash Hess, A-S-H-H-E-S-S. Check out those thirst traps. Give them a like, a fire yeah. emoji, whatever you want. Um, and then Girls Gotta Eat podcast. We're still going just like you guys. Hell so yeah. every Monday. Give us a follow uh, at Oop 